Dude, if you completely got This is the Quarantine News Network. What's up everybody? My name's Russ. I'm Isaac. And welcome to episode 14 of the Quarantine News Network. Uh, we're so excited to be with you tonight. And as you've seen all week this week on Instagram, on our social media, we have a big announcement for you tonight. And so, big. Isaac, should we go ahead and tell them? We should probably tell them all right. right now. Here's what it is. This is the last episode of the Quarantine News Network for now. I know, right? Do the slow-mo with the tears the sad music with the puppy dogs. We're sad, but we're also excited because that means something brand new is coming and we're so pumped about where we're gonna be headed moving forward. And who knows, the Q&A may be back. We, we, we don't know, uh, but we're excited and looking forward to what's next, right? Yeah, so like Rose said, we have a ton, a ton of exciting new stuff coming your way. And so at the very end of this episode, stay tuned, stay tuned. We've got some more exciting news that uh, that Cliff and Taylor are going to be sharing with us, and so, but we wanted to go to our two favorite segments throughout this whole Q and N, right. and that's songs for the soul and state of the youth. So right now, right now, let's send it out to our boy Matthew Harper with the state of the youth. Good news, students. Uh, we're going to continue on in Ephesians four this week. Ephesians four twenty-two through thirty-two to be specific. And so as you're turning there, I want to leave you with this question. Um, when you think of a firefighter or a, a soldier or even an astronaut, uh, do you typically think of their uniform that they wear? Is that one thing that would come to your mind? I see that for me, when I think of them, I, I think of their uniform. Um, and, and with those uniforms, with that identity that they have in that comes responsibilities. And this holds true in the Christian life as well. And we see Paul kind of get into that in this passage today. And so kind of be thinking that way as we're getting there. But um, let's read the passage. Starting in verse uh, 20 or, or 21, actually, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to your for former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let, do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands. So that, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, uh, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. We see Paul begin to, to identify this, this idea of putting on Christ, putting off our old self, putting on our new self. In Galatians 3, he talks about this, uh, that as believers, we're called to, to put on Christ, no longer identifying with other distinct any, any other distinction that we've ever had in our entire life, um, but only to identify in Christ. And so we see this, this main idea that he, he's kind of getting to is that as believers, we're called to live out this new identity in Christ with, with a lifestyle that is different from, from any, anything we see in the world, but also different from, from our pre-Christ life. I've kind of already mentioned it up to this point, but there's, there's two phrases 
uh, that, that we're going to kind of take with us and, and we can really rem remind ourselves of this through our daily lives, but it, it's to put off and, and to put on. And so we're going to put off our old self. We're going to put off our old our old ways of, of thinking, our outlooks, our attitudes that we used to have. We're going to put off these ways and we want to begin to to put on um, the way Christ has called us to be, the, the thoughts and the the outlooks, the attitudes, the actions that Christ is calling us to. To put off in its in, in its simplest form it is to reject or to get rid of these things, right? And I like to think of it as as you know putting off your your dirty clothes. Like you you take off your dirty clothes and you set them aside and you let Christ put these new clothes on you. And that's that's how I see it. Um, relating back to like a uniform, like we're putting on Christ. And with that comes responsibilities. So why do we put off? Uh, what's, what's the reason that we would need to, to get rid of these things? And what we see, and, and Paul begins to discuss this, is the reason we do that is because with these things, with our old life, our, our old ways, um, the ways that we see a lot of the times in the world comes corruption of life with these, these wrong attitudes. Um, he says that the former manner of life is corrupt, decayed, dead, foul, selfish, unhappy, and restless. Um, no good things come from this. No good things come from this old manner of life. Uh, no good things that will last. And so this is the first step in, in beginning to experience what God intends for us. The other is to recognize the wonderful possibilities of the new life, the new self that we begin to put on. Christians alone have the ability to change at our core because of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us, allowing us to be obedient to God and, and therefore letting us partake in the everlasting fruit of righteousness and holiness. Paul gives us examples of what this looks like to to put off our old self and to put on our new self. And so I want to want to look at these real quick, okay? And so the first one he mentions is replacing lying with truth telling. Uh, we we see him talking about putting away falsehood, and, and that includes lies, and instead being honest and and being truthful to one another. Um, this is a, this is just one example of that. Uh, we look also at replacing unrighteous anger with righteous anger, uh, replacing stealing with working and giving, replacing corrupt talk with edifying talk, uh, encouraging talk. We're building one another up instead of tearing each other down. Um, e even James talks about the destruction that words can have, and so uh, they're not to be taken lightly, and that's I believe that's why he mentions that here. Um, but also replacing bitterness and rage with kindness and forgiveness. Um, the last one, uh, we, we see the reason right after that. We see the reason that we would begin to do these things. And it's because that Christ first showed these things to us. He first um, forgave us, right? I think of this story. And you, you might have heard me mention it before. But it still holds so much truth behind it. Um, I think of a father and a son going on a camping trip. And they're going camping. They have all their gear. Um, and so they, they get everything set up. They get the tent set up. And, and they're getting ready to, to lay down for the night, right? But the son, seeing the boat on the water, asks his father, Hey, can, can, I, go go out, can I go out in that boat and go out into the water? And the father says, No. Don't go out in the boat um, because the, the waters are infested with alligators. There's tons of alligators. Um, and so to protect his son, he said, no, don't, don't go do those things. Um, and, and so that night as they're sleeping, the son wakes up and he decides, you know, I, I'll go try it out. I'll go give it a go. And he, he decides to go out and go inside the boat and go out into the water thinking, you know, there's there's no way that. Um, anything will happen to me, kind of disregarding what, the, what his father had told him at that point. And so he goes onto the water. The alligators begin to swarm around him, and he starts to, to tilt back and forth. And finally, he flips over into the water. Um, 
the next thing the, the son remembers at that point is waking up on the shore and all he sees is, is he turns to his left and he sees his father who's been mangled by the alligators. In response to what his dad just did by saving him from the alligators, do you think he would turn around, get back in the boat, and go back out into the water? Absolutely not. A absolutely not he wouldn't do that. In response to what his, his dad did to him, he definitely would not go back out into the water. His dad just saved him from the alligators. He's not running back to the alligators, right? And, and so in the same way with our life in Christ, Christ has saved us from our sin. Why would we run back to our sin? He, he died for our sin. Why would we run back for our sin, right? And so I say that to kind of give us a picture of, uh, of just how we should respond to what Christ has done for us. Um, his, what he's done for us in ourselves should cause us to respond with obedience. And, and with obedience, we can begin to partake in these things that Paul is talking about in this passage. God being rich in mercy, um, sending his son to take our punishment on the cross, allowing us to no longer be condemned in our sin, but instead giving us the opportunity to stand in the riches of God's righteousness and holiness. Um, while we're still on earth, uh, now we're able to, to, to begin to be a part of these things and, and take part in these things while we're still on earth. Before, we didn't have the ability to do what God required of us. And now, because of his Holy Spirit, we're, we're able to partake in these fruitful um, characteristics that God has, has shared with us. I encourage you that as you go on this week, that you be, you're, you're thinking of two things. You're thinking of putting off the old self and putting on the new self in Christ. You, you Essentially, at the core of it, you're repenting of your old sin and you're beginning to step into what God calls you to be. I love you guys. I'll be praying for you guys. Um, and I was, I'm excited to, to see how God continues to, to stir you up for him. But back to you guys. Thank you for that great word. And as we transition into Songs for the Soul, I hope you'll join us by worshiping. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, you love greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing can stand again what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. You silence the bows of sin and grave. 
the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus you have no rival you have no Man, thank you so much, worship team, and thank you, Matt, uh, man, just for that encouraging and challenging word. Uh, and so, man, if you feel like the Lord is speaking to you right now, we want to encourage you to take your next step in your faith, whatever that may be. So how can they do that, Russ? Well, what we need you to do is really simple. You just go and fill out our digital connect card. And there's a couple ways you can access that. You can look at the link in the description right now and you can click that there. Uh, you could go to the link in our Instagram bio or you could just simply go to gorcstudents.com and click on that connection card. And man, if you fill that out, man, whatever, whatever the Lord may be saying to you, maybe you know what your next step is or, or maybe you want help identifying it. Maybe you just need prayer. You, you're struggling, what, whatever that may look like. We want to come alongside you. So if you'll just fill out that connection card, uh, we want to come alongside you this week mm-hmm. uh, and, and connect with you and come alongside you and helping you take your next step. And so, uh, man, once again, we want to say thank you guys for tuning in each yeah. and every week to the thank Quarantine so News Network. We're not quite done. We, we do have a big announcement right after, this. right after this. But for the last time for the foreseeable future, I'm Russ Taylor. I'm Isaac Andrews. Signing, signing off, off from, from the, the Quarantine, Quarantine News Network. Network. What's up, Redemption students? It is Cliff here, and we just want to let you know we thoroughly enjoyed you guys, and for over these past 14 weeks, you guys have killed it. Not only for those of you who have participated and watched, but for those of you who actually had a part in pulling this thing off. We greatly appreciate you, and we thank you so much. Tune in has been awesome. It's been great getting to gather together on a week-in, week-out basis digitally. And we're actually going to press pause on the Q&N for just a season. And, but don't worry, because we're still going to meet together every week on an online platform. Through the month of July, we're still going to be putting out an online service. It's going to look a little different uh, compared to the Q&N, but when we're still going to be bringing God's Word, still studying Ephesians, still going to be worshiping together. And guess what? A lot of you guys will actually get to participate in these weekly gatherings. And so we'll keep you up to date on all this information, but right off the bat, you just need to know how much we've loved getting together with you guys online. And we're gonna continue to do that. And so look out for more details. Still gonna be on YouTube, still gonna be around the same time. All right? So, all that being said, stay connected. We're gonna be putting out content online like crazy uh, because we love you guys and we love hearing from you guys. And we're here for you. So if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I feel like this is our Hey Tuck moment. This is, what's a good Hey Tuck name for us? Cliffler. I like it. We'll stay Hey Cliff. 
Wanna see things change